and for their precious for his precious time so uh, sir mr gabe is a uh, is working in nasa at nasa and he is also a international speaker so without any delay let's st start our show and our uh, conversation with uh, mr gabe hi sir how are you hi good morning hi, to good you morning, good morning from here morning good from evening here. good evening from here. To you. Yes, sir. To you. There is an evening in Pakistan. <laughs> I get mixed up. I get mixed up. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? I'm excellent. I'm Thank excellent. you so Thank much. You. How, are you? How are you? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for joining my show. Thank you for your precious time and your support. It's my pleasure, my, my honor. Thank my you for asking me. Asking me. Uh, sir, first of all, I would yeah. like to request you that please give an introduction about yourself so that our viewers could know you very well. Sure, no problem. Sure, no problem. My, name my name is Gabe. That's a nickname. That's what my friends call me. That's what I ask everybody to call me. I know most of you want to call me sir or mister. And I understand that and I respect it. But I just ask you to call me by my name like my friends do and like I try to do with you. So right now I'm in Cocoa, Florida, which is about uh, 20, probably 30 kilometers from Kennedy Space Center, which is where NASA is and where they, they have all of the cool things about the space program. I was in the U.S. Air Force, and I was an engineer, civil structural type of engineer in the Air Force. When I got out of the Air Force, I wanted to get a job at around NASA because I enjoyed the space program and the space shuttle. So I was able to get the job, and I was there for 17 years. Uh, every day was amazing. Every day was magic. It's just so much fun to be there. And about eight years ago, I decided I was speaking a lot of schools, and I was doing a lot of international speaking. And I didn't have time for a job and speaking both. So I kind of looked at the financial situation and said, okay, I, I really want to do the speaking full time. So I resigned my position and I've been doing that now for the last eight years traveling around. I just came back from Pakistan. My first trip to Pakistan, it was absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to going back. Yes, sir. I watched uh, your videos and your interviews when you are you were here in Pakistan. Sir, could you please describe your role at NASA and how it contribute uh, to the organization's overall mission? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Excuse I'm me. Sorry, excuse um, me. Uh, you know, when I went to NASA, I really want the idea. I just want to learn and see what it was like and and be a part of something I thought was really, really special. Uh, my goal each day is kind of the same. It doesn't matter where I am or what's, what I'm doing. My goal is just to do the best I can and to try to enjoy the day. Uh, my life is all about enjoying everything you do and, and having fun with life and being successful. Most of the time, people are told the only way you can be successful is to work hard. And, and you must work hard to be successful. And they, all you ever hear is work hard, work hard, stress and pressure. And life is tough for people with that kind of mentality, especially for kids. To me, kids should be having fun and enjoying their life. So I have a different approach. From my approach to life, it doesn't matter whether it's NASA, it doesn't matter what it is, it's always the same. I try to just do the best I possibly can, challenge myself, how well can I do it, and how much fun can I have doing it. That's what my life is all about. So when I went to NASA, you know, I'm at this magical place, there's ships going to space, there's all this cool stuff going around. How can it not be fun? Every day was fun. Every day was a challenge, a challenge to be enjoyed. Uh, I've always had a pretty strong belief. Hey, I can do anything. You know, it's one of the things I talk about is developing that belief in yourself. When you get that belief in yourself, where you just think you can do anything. Oh, you never, you never have stress. You never have pressure. It doesn't mean you at NASA. I tell everybody my first job was working at McDonald's. It's the same thing to me. How well can I do it? How much fun can I have? So the challenge to NASA was how much can I enjoy this magical place and and I'll do whatever I can to contribute to being a positive uh, for everybody around me. Yes, sir, I agree with you that working in NASA is a uh, fun. We are also very interesting to learn more about uh, uh, NASA and space and all that. Uh, 
sir what inspired you to uh, pursue a career in nasa and how you navigate your path uh, to working for the agency so what what sure, navigate really got me going where i wanted to do at nasa I, I i was living i was in the beach i was at the beach in patrick air force base which is coco beach and i was on the beach and i got to see a shuttle launch and and i said to my friends wow this is really cool what is it you know it's kennedy space center it's nasa and i thought well when i get out of the air force i'm going to try to get a job there a position there because it looks like it's so much fun i love the area I loved the beaches. I loved everything about it. I said, this is just something more positive. So after I saw that first shuttle launch, I decided I, I would like to get a job there. And, and I did. I was very fortunate to get that job. And, and it turned out to be absolutely amazing. Uh, I really, my expectations were kind of uncertain because I didn't know too much about it. But when I got there every day, it was just magical. There's nothing like it in the world. And But you want to apply that same sense of, uh, uh, excitement and to everything we do you know it doesn't matter i go to the gym i go to the gym i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna be exciting uh, I, i'm building a car I just, everything i do is the same mental approach how well can i do it how much fun can i have do it how much fun can i make it when i came back from pakistan it took me 50 hours on a plane to get from pakistan to my home 50 hours think about that i had to make every minute of those 50 hours fun no matter what I did, no matter where I was, I had to mentally approach every minute the same. I'm going to have fun doing this. And when you do that, the time goes really fast. You enjoy it. If any aspect of those 50 hours would have been negative, it would have just pulled me down the rest of the way. So my challenge in life is to enjoy everything equally. Uh, you can find something you like and think, ah, oh, that's really fun. Something you may not like so much, the challenge is that to make equally fun is what you do. And you can do it. It just takes a strong mental approach. So this is a great thing to make every moment of our life fun. It is very difficult and not all people can do this. They, they make their every moment of your life fun. Um, yeah, you can, do it. you can do it. I promise you, I you, promise can, you, do you can do it. Can do it. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, did you think in your childhood that you you would become uh, a member of nasa and you will working in nasa so what do you say what do you feel what do you uh, what your uh, feelings in your childhood and what your aim in your childhood what uh, what you want to be in your uh, uh, in your life do you ever think that you will be the member of nasa you will work with nasa uh, no <laughs> Uh, one of the things I talk about is how much I struggled as a kid, how I hated school. I really did terrible in school. I failed everything. I, I loved the beach and I love sports. And so they they dragged me off the beach and they put me in this box and they told me to read and, and I didn't want to do any of that. So I was really, really struggling a lot. I was good at sports, but not anything else. Uh, I Probably at that point in my life, I had no clue what I thought I could do. I didn't think I could do much. I knew I could play sports, but I really didn't think I could do anything else. So I, I struggled. And that's why I relate to the kids who are struggling. I, I know many kids struggle. And and they try to put up this, this amazing front that they're really good. But many, many kids struggle all over the world. One of the things I learned at going to Pakistan when I was in Pakistan, it is exactly like everywhere else. You are no different. You are no different from kids in Germany, in, in Norway. In India, you are all exactly, not a little bit, all exactly the same. Everybody struggles one way or another. And even the kids who do the best in school, sometimes you think, oh, they're doing so well in school, they're doing great. But sometimes they they hide their, their fears and uncertainties with life in their schoolwork. So they do really, really well in school, but they still struggle away from school. So I try to get along with kids and say, look, you know, life can be fun. You can get away from this stress and this pressure and, and really enjoy what you do. I talk about three things. So important. Do your best. Enjoy what you do. Believe in yourself. If you learn these three things, everything in your life will be good. Uh, when you're having fun, people think, oh, you're not trying hard. You're not really care. You're having fun. But you can have fun and care harder than anybody else if you challenge yourself to do your best. So no matter what you do, challenge yourself to do best. Feel good about your effort. If it's not what you want, it's okay. Do it again. You will get better. 
but always feel good about your effort. Enjoy everything you do. This is a challenge for sure. Just like I said, those 50 hours, it would have been easy. I had a 16 and a half hour layover in Dubai, seven and a half hour layover in Canada. I could have sat there for those 16 and a half hours being miserable. Or I could have had fun. It was a mental choice. I chose to make it fun. It doesn't matter what you do. And the most important thing, believe in yourself. Very few people have this belief in yourself. So I didn't have any goals when I was a kid. I really just wanted to try to have fun and play sports. But when you learn to get this belief in yourself, it's so important. Everything starts usually with a dream or an idea. You have this dream and you think, ah, oh, this is something I want to do. You write it down and say, this is my goal. And then you ask yourself, what steps do I take to achieve it? And you plan very small steps. Don't be in a hurry. Every time you complete a step, it gives you confidence, which you help believe, develop that belief in yourself. And you do this slowly, slowly, slowly over a long period of time till one day you say to yourself, I can do anything. And when you believe that, you will never have stress. You'll never have pressure. So as I progressed through school, I really hated school. I struggled through high school. I got out of high school. I was so happy I was done with school. But I tell people, 12 years, I tried different things. I went to university at night, and I got through university. It took me eight years. So I learned a lot. I I got a lot of confidence and belief in myself. So, you know, all of those, all of that's part of a learning process that we all go through. And we learn most when things don't go as expected. But one of the things you want to learn more than anything is develop that belief in yourself to the point that God, I can do anything. Your life gets so easy, and it's so much fun. Yes, sir. That's great thing you said that you should believe in yourself. And when I see myself, I I feel that I don't believe myself. And when I whenever I think do things, uh, but I don't believe that no, I can't do. And just I uh, doing interviews in uh, English, so I say no, my English is not good. How can I do? And I can't do. I, I do any uh, things like, but I don't believe in myself that I. I never ever I can uh, do this. So, sir, this is very great thing. We should have believe in ourselves. So, I want to say I something to you. Some... Yes, sir. First of all, first of all, your English is very good. You should not feel one tiny bit bad about your English. Your English is excellent. And secondly, you are awesome. Ask yourself, what things have I accomplished? And say, you know, I accomplished that one. I didn't think I could, and I did. I did. You can do anything. Nila Farah, I promise you, you have the capability and ability to do anything. And you never fail. Every time we do something, we learn. We never fail. And when we learn, it helps us be a better and wiser person. You take that knowledge with you into the present and you use it for your next decisions. So you're constantly building and constantly learning. You should feel really good about yourself and ask yourself, what well, all these are things I've accomplished? I accomplished them. Why can't I accomplish anything? And you should believe you can do anything. I believe you can do anything. The only thing stopping you is you. Sir, I mostly, I, I, I add one thing about myself that I usually think I'm not, I'm ugly and other girls are beautiful. I'm not beautiful. And so, such types of uh, uh, thoughts are always in my mind that I'm not good in everything, in anything. You are so good you in are everything. Good. There is no <laughs> doubt in my mind. You have a beautiful, you have a beautiful smile. smile. You have beauty eyes. What else could what you, else ask, could you of ask of yourself? yourself? You know, it doesn't matter it doesn't how matter I see you. It doesn't matter how I see you. It matters how you see yourself. And girls have been taught from the time they're little girls, their whole lives, if you feel good about yourself, you're conceited. And this is wrong. So girls look for negatives in themselves. You are so pretty, you should feel really, really good about yourself. It doesn't mean you're better than anybody else. It just means you like who you are. If you don't like yourself, how can you expect others to like you? So feel good about yourself. You know, look in the mirror and say, I have a nice smile. I have nice eyes. Look for positives in yourself. See those positives and feel good about them. It doesn't mean you think you're better than anybody else. It just means you feel good about who you are, and you really should feel good about who you are. I tell girls all the time, 
you look your absolute best when you wake up in the morning. Even if one eye is closed, your hair is all a mess, <laughs> look at that person and say, I look pretty good. When you can learn to see how that person looks, then you feel good about yourself the rest of the day. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter how you accessorize yourself. None of that matters. It matters how you are. The people who really care about you will always see you in a special way. The others don't really care. It doesn't really matter. So girls are so self-critical. You know, I always talk to moms. I always say, if you have a daughter, and when you have a daughter at some point, always say we. Say to your daughter, we have a nice smile. We have anything positive you say to your daughter, you say we. Most moms say something positive to the daughter and something negative about themselves. They do this all the time. They teach their daughters to feel badly about themselves. So learn to say we. This is important. And you should feel really good about yourself. You know, you can look around you, and I don't know why you don't see the good in yourself, but you should. It just means you're not, you just feel good about yourself. It's so important. Yes, sir. My mother always say, no, you are, you can do it. You are intelligent. You, uh, means my mother is always supporting me and encouraging me that, no, don't think like that, that you are not good in anything or you are ugly or you can't do anything. <laughs> you are right. Yes, but your mom yes, is saying so she, she, she loves you and she sees you in a certain way. way. And, and you want to learn to feel good about yourself and see yourself in a certain way as well. You know, for, and you're no different than almost every girl walking on the planet. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're in Pakistan or if you're in India or if you're in Germany or if you're in Norway. I don't care. Almost every girl feels the same as you do. And some of the ones who you think they feel really good and they look good, they're just like you. They're just pretending that they feel differently. Most every girl feels exactly the same as you around the world. You've been taught by others. If you feel good about yourself, you're conceited. And so you don't do that. And, and you find negatives in yourselves all of the time. And your mom is right, but your mom should say we. Every time she compliments you, she should say we. You know, not just you, she should say we. And next time your mom compliments you, you say to her, say we. <laughs> okay? Yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir. I will tell my mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Is this important? She's still going to herself too. Yes, sir. Agree, sir. <laughs> sir uh, sir, uh, coming to our uh, topic on the sign, the earth and universe, all, and all that. Sir, our earth is very tiny uh, in the entire universe, but it possesses the uniqueness of uh, uh, sustained life. So, sir, is there any possibility, any evidence of life in any other planet on the uh, uh, in the universe? Well, they haven't found they haven't life found anywhere, life. but they really yeah, believe they really it's there. there. When I say they, I mean scientists in general. Uh, people believe that life has to exist. If you think about, you know, our solar system, our galaxy, our universe, now there's millions of planets around this whole universe, and you, there can't be. I, I believe there has to be life somewhere. I don't speak for anybody but myself, but there has to be life. There can't be life to me in this huge, vast universe. Only planet in the whole universe that has life doesn't make sense. I don't believe it's been to Earth. Some people believe it has been to Earth, but I think if, if it had been to Earth, we would know. I really believe something came from, you know, billions of light years away from so far away we don't even know it exists. If it got here... Uh, hard for me to believe it would turn around and leave and we wouldn't have some kind of connection. Uh, that's my view. Some people say, yeah, I was walking along. A ship picked me up, took me up, examined me and put me back down. I, I don't say to them, you're wrong, you're insane. <laughs> I say, okay, you know, you have your belief, but I, I don't believe that's true. But I believe life has to exist. Uh, NASA is always looking for new new forms of life on different planets. And, and then one of the reasons to go to Mars is to see maybe there's some sort of life there. Uh, it probably wouldn't look like us, but who knows what it might be or what it might be looking like. But I believe it's there. I believe uh, almost all scientists believe it exists somewhere. Uh, it's just a matter of how to contact it or how far away it is. And uh, hopefully sometime, you know, there'll be a connection. Okay, sir. Sir, are there, uh, are there any discoveries in Mars and the moon? They are most more popular, and recently India also landed to the moon. 
Yeah. So, <clears throat> first of all, I'm a, I'm a well, huge I'm a, fan a, of the Indian space program, ISRO. Uh, I think it's awesome. Uh, I would love to see Pakistan and India join together and, and develop a space program because the countries are so much alike and the people are identical. I mean, somewhere in the past, and some, excuse me, someone put a, a, a imaginary sand, a line in the sand. This is India and this is Pakistan. But it's the same people, the same country. You are so much alike. And I'm very smart. You know, I think people in India, I, I people in India are the smartest people in the world, but I did not have a concept of what Pakistan was like until I visited there. And after I was there, uh, I, you know, I'm absolutely amazed at Pakistan. I had the most negative view of Pakistan anybody could ever have. And I think, you know, we're brainwashed being in America. We only hear what the news tells us. And the news tells us about suicide bombers or about a haven for terrorists after 9-11. And so this is what we think. We we don't, when I say we, I, I'm generalizing that many people are like me. We don't understand Pakistan is actually an amazing country with super smart people, uh, awesome universities, wonderful architecture, kind hearted people. It's, it's for me, I, I totally enjoyed every second I was in Pakistan and every second I was in Pakistan, I was amazed at how much it is just like the rest of the world. And when I always had this negative view. But, you know, India, yeah, Indian space program is doing really well. They've launched a, a rover on the moon. They've also sent a ship to a star, our sun, which is only second time that's ever been done. So, yeah, the Indian space program is doing well. Um, space programs around the world are, are getting better, bigger. More and more countries are going. Uh, more commercial companies are going. There's many opportunities uh, to, to get involved in the space program. And I hope at some point Pakistan will, will have a thriving space program as well. We are hoping and we are praying that one day, one day Pakistan also went to the moon and led it to the moon. Like yes, I, I, yes think I, I think it's possible. Yes, sir. sir. How's life in space? We uh, we are wonder how's life, uh, how people live there uh, when uh, tourists went to the moon, how they uh, spend their life on this space. Well, well you, know, you know, it's people talk people about colonizing the moon. You know, let's colonize Mars in case something happens to Earth. We can go live on Mars. But in my opinion, which, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm an engineer, civil structural type of engineer. But my view is that Mars is a pretty nasty place. Well, we can't drink the water. We can't breathe the air. Uh, the, the atmosphere is terrible. The environment is terrible. The weather is bad. That radiation is a major problem. Our planet protects us from radiation. Uh, Mars is dozens, so you have radiation coming from the sun, very high levels, which can cause problems. Have these huge sandstorms that engulfs the whole planet. So that's really a really a, uh, not not a real to me a place that I would want to go live. But people will live there. There's no doubt in my mind. As far as colonizing it, you know, I, I probably technology maybe 500 years from now. I don't know. At some point, may be able to establish a way to to kind of live on there, but. I don't know. For me, it's more about taking care of the Earth. You know, one of the things people don't realize when we explore space, the knowledge we take going to space, we use to help us on Earth. So let's always put the Earth first, make sure we take care of the Earth. Uh, is there life on Mars? Scientists believe billions of years ago that, that Mars was a lot like Earth. They had oceans and lakes and rivers, even an environment like Earth. So they think maybe something may have lived on Mars at one time or, or maybe alive today. That's one of the reasons to go. Also, it's, it's you know, it, it takes us seven months to get to Mars. And so you have to be in a ship seven months. And once you're there, you have to stay 23 months before you can come back. So to go to Mars and back is three years. And we could probably go to Mars and come back now. But trying to sustain life for 23 months on Mars is a huge, huge challenge. So I, I don't know, you know, the future. Um, who knows what the future may bring. But for me right now, my perspective is, you know, we're going to America wants to go land on the moon, develop a base on the moon, learn to live on the moon and then go to Mars. So there may be other, you know, maybe China, maybe SpaceX, maybe other space agencies may get to Mars before uh, NASA does. But NASA is going to take the knowledge they learn living on the moon and take that to Mars. And the idea being, you know, it takes three days to go to the moon takes seven days to go to Mars. If you're on the moon and you have a problem, you can get there and, and fix it reasonably quick. 
you have an issue on Mars, it takes seven months to get there. Plus, the planets have to be aligned. You can't just go anytime you want. So there's a lot of issues with going to Mars. Learn to live on the moon. Hopefully, the lessons learned on the moon will prevent those lessons, those same mistakes from being made on Mars. And we'll you know, have a better time getting there. But the future, who knows? You know, there may find life on other planets um, outside our solar system uh, or even outside of our galaxy. Yes, sir. These are such interesting and uh, amazing facts about uh, life on NASA. Sir, we Muslims... Uh, Pray, uh, pray uh, when pray, uh, we have to face our uh, towards Kaaba. We have to uh, in a particular direction towards Kaaba. So I wonder if uh, if I were to go in this space, how I perform pray? Where I have uh, where how I in in which, in which direction I uh, move my face and toward. Uh, so <laughs> such things I. Uh, in um, think uh, in my mind that when, if I were go to the moon, where I uh, uh, do my face, uh, when I have to perform pray. <laughs> you know, uh, you know uh, there's a movie called a movie The Master. I don't know if you've heard of that movie or seen that movie. It's a movie about astronauts living on Mars. And, and you see how and they, they live, on how Mars. live on Mars. So they live in a so big home in a big area. area where they can take off their spacesuits and they can live a normal type of life. 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 The temperature is controlled. The the atmosphere is controlled. So they live inside this domed area for extended periods of time. And probably it will get bigger and bigger and bigger, turn more like into a little town or a small town where people live on a normal basis. When you go outside that domed area, you'll have to put on a spacesuit of some sort so that you can breathe outside that area. And they're actually in this movie, there's a car that they drive around on Mars, and this car exists. It's real. So in the future, people will live and sustain some kind of life, and it will be a normalcy when they're in a protected environment. Uh, when they leave that protected environment, then they'll have to put on a spacesuit. But your day-to-day ritual in that normal, in that domed area would probably be pretty much like on Earth, I would think. My mother said, "Me, you uh, face towards the earth. <laughs> when you have to perform pray, you face towards the earth." Sir, uh, what should be the qualification uh, to work in the space and work with NASA? Well, you know, the space you program. Know, the space program, program like, for one thing, Kennedy one Space thing. Center, where I am, it's like a little city. So you can do anything and be in the space program. You can be a cook. Uh, You can be a carpenter, you can be a mechanic, you can be an engineer, or you can be an astronaut. You can do almost anything and be part of the space program. That's the fun of it. Uh, I'm an engineer, a civil structural type of engineer. So I deal with roads and bridges and buildings, elevators, uh, air conditioning systems. I don't get to build the ships. I don't get to go on the ships, but I see them and I'm around them. And I think that's the magic of it. Uh, I think it's just fun place to be. And and you can be almost anything you want to be and be part of a space program. And I think that's the greatest thing is you can be anything. To me, it's all, all a big team. If you're cutting the grass, you're still being a part of a space program. If you're a nurse, you're still being a part of a space program. The whole thing to me is one big team. Everybody does their part. We're all successful together. To me, we all appreciate the successes, every aspect of it has. Till we see a launch. We see something go into space. That's when it's super cool. That's what it's all about. Wow, sir, that's great. <laughs> Means anybody can uh, anybody can uh, can uh, join the NASA. Well, to join, to join NASA is a little bit more challenging. You have to be uh, American. To be American. So this is one uh, of the challenges anybody has outside of America. Of America. But it's possible, it's and possible, I, I've talked to students a lot around the world. If you want to if become want part to of become NASA, NASA, you have to become an American citizen. And this is your, biggest, this challenge. Is your biggest challenge. So first you have to, so get, to, you have to get to them all. So the best way so to me is to always be university. university. America has, America many, has great many great programs, programs, many great programs for international, international students. students. Uh, students can uh, try students to get from America. But once they're here as a student, they can try to stay, establish residency, become a citizen, apply to go for NASA. I say to you, right now, if you want to become at NASA, it might take you 20 years. 
you would have to say, okay, it's no big deal. I can do 20 years. That's what I want to do. Either way, you're going to pass through those 20 years. You can pass through them doing something you think you'd like to achieve. Either way, you're going to pass through them. So don't be in a hurry. It doesn't matter what your goals are. Enjoy the journey. It's so important. Yes, sir. Everything takes time and every goal takes uh, more time, more patience. Sir, any interesting moment, any mo a memorable moment in your uh, work uh, or your tour to the space or any with your any colleagues uh, if you would like to share with us? Yeah, for, well, for yeah, me, well, it's, for it's me, always it's about the launches. About the you know, uh, whatever happens in the space program, we, one of the things with me I, as a, an engineer, I got to travel all around Kennedy Space Center. So I got to see the ships, the pieces of the ships being brought in, see them being put together, seeing payloads putting on a top. You know, we had a mission that went to Pluto. So I saw all that mission be put together, saw it launch to Pluto. It took 10 years to get to Pluto. So for 10 years, we were kind of following this mission. Then we saw it get to Pluto, go around Pluto, all of the fun things. Uh, it's just a daily, to me, everything is about building and exploring. And But I love the launches. Uh, when I quit my job at NASA eight years ago, I stayed on as what's called a volunteer. So if they have special events like two nights ago, they had a launch to the International Space Station. They were taking supplies. They needed volunteers to help with guests. So every time there's a launch, people come from around the world to see this launch. So they just can't let them wander around by themselves. They need escorts. So that's what my job was, to stay with some foreign nationals, make sure that they got to see the launch where they were supposed to. And I got to see it as well. So uh, it, it's amazing to me. There's nothing like a launch, especially at night. They're just magical. You, you w looking at everything is pitch black, and then all of a sudden it's daylight. It just changes, changes night to day. It's, it's so magical. But for me, uh, ultimately, everything is about seeing the launches and the noise and everything that goes with them. Uh, to, to, to the space. Uh, nothing, is uh, scary. nothing is scary. Everything is everything fun. Is fun. And, and never and, think and nervous. Never think nervous. Always, think Always think exciting. Anytime you find yourself in a situation where you think you bite me nervous, say to yourself, I'm not nervous, I'm excited. It's the same feeling. It's the exact same feeling, but one is negative and one is positive. Exciting means you're getting a chance to do something you really want to do. And you know you're going to do well because you're good at it. Nervous is you're afraid you're going to not do well. But it's the same feeling, the same thing inside of you. So always think exciting. Never think nervous. Never think about not being successful. Always think about the joy of the opportunity of doing something fun and making it fun. And that's the way you want to approach everything. And that's how I approach everything. Everything I do is fun in my life. Everything is exciting. Everything is a challenge. Uh, everything has a great sense of accomplishment. So that's what I try to share, that, that this should be life, not stress and pressure and working hard. You know, either way, you're going to do the exact same thing. It's how you mentally choose to see it. So you can pass through life working hard with stress and pressure, or you can pass through that same life having fun and enjoying what you do. Either way, it's the same thing. It's just a mental approach. If you can learn to push your mind in a certain way, Life is so much fun. Yes, sir, exactly. You are right. <laughs> sir, I am very interesting and learning about the uh, moon and space and all that. Sir, uh, I also used to watch videos and particularly live, live streaming about moon and NASA. Sir, and uh, another uh, topic that is most fascinating for me uh, is... Uh, wormholes and black holes sir could you please uh, 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 explain what uh, what are the black holes what are the uh, uh, sorry what are the wormholes and what is the difference be between these two terms and sir another thing that i also come across the videos that uh, uh, they're discussing about the uh, time traveling through wormholes so sir is there any possibility of time traveling through these wormholes so, so what you ask me is a, a huge scientific uh, question. So I, I'm an engineer. I'm not a scientist. So I, I know of these things you're talking about. I know black holes. I know wormholes. 
Uh, I know all this other stuff they're talking about, but I, I really don't understand much about it. You know, a black hole, something is really created when a star dies. When something explodes, it goes out. When it implodes, it comes in. So when a star dies, it creates this implosion where everything around it gets dragged into it. That's how black holes are formed. That's a little bit of what I know. Uh, the wormholes, I don't know. It's supposed to be something inside of a black hole or something that takes you to another dimension. Uh, all this stuff is kind of beyond my comprehension. Uh, traveling faster than time. You know, I uh, these things sound amazing. And, and everything, to me, anything is possible. First of all, I believe anything is possible. Anything. So to travel faster than time... Uh, I don't know if you've ever, have you heard of Stephen Hawkins? Do you know who Stephen Hawkins is? Okay, so Stephen Hawkins, he's a very famous scientist, and he's done a lot of videos. One of uh, his videos, and, and, and write this down, is called Rocket Ship to the Future. Can you remember this? Rocket Ship to the Future by Stephen Hawkins. When we're done with this, I want you to Google that and watch it. It's super cool. It's about a ship that goes faster than time. And it talks about how powerful this ship is. It's a great little video. It's only maybe three or four minutes long. But that will give you kind of a, an idea of what perception is going faster than time. The reality, you know, to me is, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years away uh, when technology somehow will allow that to happen. But, but all of those things you're talking about, you know, I, I always say when in doubt, Google, you know. Uh, Google it, see what Google tells you, and then you can take your own opinion from that. But but most of it is beyond my comprehension. Yes, sir. That's what I'm asking. They, I don't know. I don't remember the name of the scientist. But actually, what I what is that uh, I'm asking? That uh, time traveling future in future through uh, these wormholes. I also Google it, and Google say yes, you can. Uh, travel to the future uh, through these wormholes i don't know yeah i, I don't yeah, know I, I don't know to me it's to me it's it's all speculation, it's all speculation. you know these you these know. wormholes and these black holes are are sometimes billions of light years away so one light year is 10 trillion kilometers think about this one light year 10 trillion kilometers they talk about these black holes and wormholes being thousands or millions of light years away so even if it's possibly true it's so far away how would we ever know or measure it to be true that far away so as technology develops and things change maybe in the future there's some sort of opportunity to do this based on technology we don't even know exists now but for me you know i i i try to take each day and enjoy the day you know, if I if my mind is going out to something I totally don't understand, I mean, it goes there for a few seconds, but then I push it away and I focus. OK, what am I doing today? What can I enjoy? And I'll let the scientists figure this other stuff out. But just remember, Stephen Hawkins, uh, rocket ship to the future. I think you will really enjoy this video. And I'll send and it to I'll you. I'll send it to you. Yes, sir. I will. Uh... Sir, I will watch this video. Seven, uh, I think it's seven. Sir, in other other name, second name. Uh, Stephen Hawkins. Uh, Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins. To the future. Oh. To the future. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Okay, sir. Inshallah, I will watch this video. Uh, sir, uh, now uh, we have talked about your work, uh, your work at NASA, sir. Uh, I, now I ask you a, a question about you. That. Uh, is there any special uh, person in your life who is the most special person in your life do, who you think that you are is the reason for your happiness and for your success? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, you I, know I, think I, I think really it's really up to it's, us as individuals to find happiness and success. Others can help motivate us. Others can help to give us examples. But ultimately, it's up to us to find positives in ourselves, like with you. You have to learn to find positives in yourself and feel good about yourself. We meet people throughout our lives and we think, you know, I'd like to be like this person. They're someone I admire, someone I respect. But it's up to you. Once you've seen that, then you have to put the effort. People are always saying to me, thank you for what you did for me. You helped me so much. And I say, look, I offered suggestions. You did it all. You know, in order for you to learn, you have to be willing to listen, evaluate and adapt. 
You have to be willing to do all three of those. And when you do that, you take something you learn from somebody else and you apply it to yourself. But it really takes a lot of effort for you. Uh, in my life, there's one guy I, I really call very special. I, I have so many amazing people I've met in my life. But the one I think that, that I see the most and I think about the most, his name is Randall. And I talk about him in the presentations. He's my BFF, my best friend forever in America. And he's blind. He's 100% blind. He cannot see anything. But he does everything. He's amazing. He never complains. He's never unhappy. He's always optimistic. He's amazing. And he's 100% blind. He wasn't born that way. So he had to go through the whole transition of sight to sightless and, and all of those things. But I'm around him a lot. We do what's called triathlons. We did triathlons together. We swim, bike, and run. Uh, we do a lot of athletic things together. I've seen him do things that are absolutely amazing. And I remind myself constantly, look, uh, I can see. You know, my best friend, he's blind. He can't see, but he does everything. And whenever I think, you know, anything might be a little bit challenging in my life, I always remind myself, look, you can see. You know, you can see. Be thankful you can see. Be thankful you can walk. All that other stuff is just secondary. So he, he's probably the biggest inspiration with me to remind myself, you know, I really have a good. I, I'm always thankful. I always feel fortunate. But but to see someone who's blind overcome all, just like like if you want to eat your lunch and your food is on a plate, you can't even see it. So something as simple as eating food for us is a challenge for someone who can't see. And and I'm always thankful. So from him, I've taken the, you know, here's the guy with me with one of the most challenging things, yet he never complains. He's always happy and he can do anything. Yes, sir. That's, sir. That's very, that's great. And that's an amazing thing one can have. Allah bless us with everything, but we, uh, in spite of, uh, uh, in spite of uh, no any, uh, uh, what I say, uh, no any issue with us, we have everything, but we are not happy. Like I, I uh, say for myself that I'm always uh, disappointed and uh, all that. <laughs> so, sir, this is an, an amazing thing. And, sir, I, uh, I want to tell you that uh, uh, a lady, Helen Killer, I hope you know the name. Helen Killer, she is dumb, deep, and blind. But she did uh, good with her life. Yes. And I'm yes. really inspired with uh, his life when I read at my uh, 10th grade about his life, about her life. So, sir, it's a, an amazing and a great thing one can have. Yes, you're right. Yes, and you're right. Right. You know, the, all we have to do is look around. And we realize we, we have realize it too good. Others really Others don't really have it as good as we do. And people, people, sadly, people sadly, most of the time, think, of the about time think about what they don't have, have instead of enjoying what they do. You know, and I'm I'm thankful every minute of every day. I honestly am. I have a really good life. I have, I'm so fortunate. I just have to make sure that I remind myself every day to be thankful for what I have. And you know, I I, I I'm just very very fortunate. I try to give back to others. People have been so kind to me my whole life. So uh, I just try to be kind to others because of all the kindness I've received. And and I know it's a great feeling when you help others, and if you help for the joy of helping. If you help for, you think you're going to get something back, then you're going to be disappointed. So you have to learn to help for the joy of helping and feel good about what you've done. Everything else will fall in place. Sir, I really enjoy this uh, conversation, this interview session, and uh, uh, I this is very informative as well as very enjoyable. I really enjoy uh, your company, and thank you so much once again for joining my show sir in the last i would uh, like to uh, request you so please any uh, message you can uh, convey uh, you can give to our audience yeah so my yeah, message so is my very message sustained. Sustained. i welcome the opportunity welcome. but just remember those three things do your best enjoy what you do believe in yourself your life can be fun you can be very successful just to learn to those three things every day and ask yourself just one day can I just do this for one day, only one day, and just do that every day? Just take each day and say, okay, I'm going to enjoy this day. No matter what happens, I just have to do it for one day. And we can do all do anything for one day, but we do that each day. Every day as we pass through it, 
we create our past and we build our future. When you have a happy day, your past is always happy. Together, your future is optimistic. So it's all about that day and remembering those three things. Do your best. Enjoy what you do. Believe in yourself. So I would like to say uh, good night to everyone in Pakistan. Uh, good morning from here. I'm heading outside now. I have some things to do, and I'll be outside in the sunshine. Yes, sir. I also learned from this session that believe in yourself. And second thing, find fun in every moment, in everything. Yeah, I'm going to send you all this stuff. Thank you so much once again for coming and joining and giving your precious time. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're very My welcome. pleasure. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we were uh, today we have uh, Mr. Gabe and we uh, today's session is very informative very uh, I really enjoy the conversation and I really enjoy this session so inshallah in our next program we will come again with an uh, other an amazing person an amazing guest till then Allah Hafiz. so goodbye everybody goodbye everybody goodbye.